Cubs are in the market for some top end relievers. We're going to talk about one of those guys that has been tied to the Cubs and Brian Stenick. Top 10 left fielders released by the MLB Network. One guy that won a gold glove isn't even listed. Jock Peterson could be on the move, the former Cub. And Cody Bellinger, could he be going to the Cubs sometime soon now that Scott Boris' clients are signing? And is that a sign that the Cubs are going to get him? Pun intended. Let's get this thing started. Thanks for hanging out with us here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. That's a way of saying go Cubs. Let's get this thing started. What do you say, everybody, with the catfish? Mr. Chad Anderson, I'm Mick Gillespie at This Chat is Real, at Broadcaster Mick on the socials. Great to have all of you guys with us here. And let's talk a little bit of Cubs baseball, Chad. Uh, right off the bat, Jock Peterson. Let's just start with Jock Peterson, former Cub who could be going to Arizona. Remember the Cubs had him just a little, a little time in the season, traded him to Atlanta, and he helped lead the Braves to the World Series, then went to the Giants. He could be going to Arizona, and I feel like the Diamondbacks are stockpiling right now after their run to the World Series. Yeah, and he's one of those guys that's uh, nice to just have you know, in the clubhouse because Arizona, while they obviously made the uh, NLCS last year, um, you know, they're just a team. They made the NLCS or the World Series. They made the World Series. World Series, yeah. All right, yeah. I was like, it's as soon as I said that, I, I thought, wait a minute, that, that doesn't seem right. Um, yeah, so the Diamondbacks, you know, they get in that spot where they they have so much, especially young talent, that this is just a good piece that really adds to that. And when it comes playoff time in October, uh, these kinds of players, you're not looking for Jock Peterson to, like, add some major hole in your lineup to carry you through the season. It's a very just good, solid, likable teammate uh, who's been on winning teams, has been in the postseason, and he continues to help uh, a lot of the younger guys, you know, kind of deal with those circumstances and situations. And so I think that's a, a huge piece, you know, again, not because it's some superstar signing, but just, one of those quality ads that's always good to have that kind of a presence in the locker room. Well, he's a left-handed batter. Didn't put up the great numbers last year, but apparently had some kind of a hand or wrist injury that held him back. And he's got experience. And it also tells me this, Chad, the fact that the Cubs aren't interested in him at all, apparently tells mm -hmm. you that they need a left-handed bat. And I think they're focused on one guy and yeah. one guy only, and that's Cody Bellinger. So, I mean, if they were – thinking they weren't going to get Bellinger, wouldn't you have Jock Peterson just as, a, you know, some kind of a backup plan to have a left-handed bat? Uh, it's a question that I think is fair to ask, but you're right also. I mean, he's one of those guys that you look at and you say, you know what, he can help you win, and, um, you know, we'll see. But the Diamondbacks have done a nice job of, you know, basically stockpiling talent this offseason. Now, the Cubs are going to try to do the same thing, and it was reported today, I, I – uh, saw this, and it makes sense that Ryan Stenick of the Astros could be Ryan Stenick of the Cubs. The Cubs and a couple of other teams are in the mix. The Cubs are looking to replace the Michael Farmers, like the guys that are – the. there was a crew of guys last year that the Cubs had, Chad, in the close games that you used, your big out guys, right? Stenick would certainly be one of them, uh, part of uh, an Astros World Series team. Uh, last year did a nice job in 55 games. He's not a closer, but he's one of those guys you can bring in in high leverage situations and get outs. Yeah, I mean, th this would be a, a nice addition for the Cubs. The middle relief, like you were talking about, um, players have moved on, and the Cubs had a lot of injuries in that bullpen last year, and they kind of deteriorated as you got into the month of September. So, again, Adding a quality arm like this, a guy who's not afraid of a pressure cooker, can come in in high leverage situations, and also is just one of those guys who's been on a winning team, you know, yeah. bringing that experience into that middle relief role. 
Well, pitching's you know, always something that's important. So, yeah, and you bring that up too. Winning and bringing winners in is certainly going to uh, help the clubhouse. And you've got guys on the team already with World Series championships, including Dansby Swanson, but you got a lot of guys that haven't won one yet. And don't forget Kyle Hendricks, I know. Uh, well, so it's always great to have these guys. Well, you talk about the Diamondbacks being young. I mean, the Cubs are also very young. And, and like you just mentioned, they're full of a team that – doesn't really have playoff experience I, right. at, hardly at all. Um, I mean, Nico Madrigal, uh, Ian Hap's been, been around, but if PCA comes up, Suzuki, uh, you know, all these guys who, who are not really like sound playoff veterans, um, again, more good pieces there. If the Cubs can snag this one. Yep. And I thought this was interesting. This is a guy that we have debated about a lot on the channel, uh, off and on, but, um, top 10 left fielders, according to the MLB network, and you look through there and there's, there's no Ian Happ, Kyle Schwarber's number 10. Um, Christian Yelich is eight. That's an awful low, but you know, they're talking about guys that they feel like are the top left fielders in the game. And I was a little bit surprised that he wasn't listed. I, I wish they could have come up with a more eye blinding graphic. Cause this is extremely <laughs> hard to read. Man. Like, you know, you don't think you're green? Who's who is neon green in major league baseball and then the white lettering, like somebody really blew it in Canva there. At a, <laughs> this. Uh, but you know, I don't know what it is and, and we have been kind of hard sometimes on, on Ian Happ, but I, like, he's a great guy. Everything I hear about, he's awesome. But if I'm just talking from a baseball perspective, I, it's like this guy always gets on base and he always wins gold gloves, but nobody else thinks he's a top 10 outfielder either. And that's kind of interesting, right? Like he's won two gold gloves in his career, I think is the number now. And he, he takes walks and he can get on base and, you know, he's formidable, but I, I just like, there's nothing exciting about him. And I think that's maybe where this list is coming from, that it's just kind of like Ian Happ may have an award or two, but just more ho-hummish, I guess, is, is the best way to describe it. Last year, he hit 248, you know, uh, he had a 360 on base percentage. That's the key. That's that's where he gets a lot of the praise. 21 home runs, 84 knocked in. You know, um, I don't know. I think part of it was people felt like David Ross batting him third in the lineup day after day was just not a good spot for him. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know. I mean, do you feel like he's clutch? I think a lot of people criticize that about him too. Like you watch Bellinger and how many – game winning, you know, game tying big RBI hits did he have? You know, and and and, and how many yeah. did he and Hap not have, you know, or whatever. Hap I, I is clutch against the Pirates. Like he owns the Pirates, okay? <laughs> he probably pays property tax in Pittsburgh. But he is just ruthless <laughs> yeah. against the Pirates. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm with you and I think that's that may be it too, like subconsciously maybe our expectations of a three-hole hitter and not a oh he hit third 40 times last year, like, like you said, every single day he was in the heart of that order. And I think that may be it just again, subconsciously we're looking at it going, that's the three hitter. And maybe if he was like six or seven uh, or you know, as much as he gets on base, even one or two. Um, but I think that may be a little bit more it. You just look at it and you're like, man, that's the best three hitter the Cubs can come up with. And you know, yeah. it could be part of it. Two, uh, let's see, two years ago, 22, he was an all star and he hit 271, but the on base percentage was 342. And then last year he hit lower, but he had 99 walks and he got on base a lot. I don't know. To me, I mean, I think he's more of a number two hitter or maybe down in the lineup somewhere. Right. But I also think, Chad, that when you look at this list, I mean, uh, and I, and I, this is going to be something that I got a feeling that a lot of people are going to debate uh on the channel here because he is such a topic but to me i i mean i just feel like there's some guys on this list that i would think you would want more than him right i mean a rosarena a rosarena please 
I'll take Randy at number six all day long. I love a Rosarena. Yeah. I, I I'm actually guys the analytics crowd doesn't like because of all the soft contact hits, but they're hits. I, I'm surprised with Yelich. I mean, I, I truly don't know his numbers on the spot here, so maybe it's justified, but Yelich is not the Yelich of before. I mean, he's he's gotten older. Yeah, you know, he's been with the Brewers now, what, seven years, eight years, somewhere in there since the trade from the Marlins. Um, I mean, it's not that he's been slipping, he's just getting older. Um, and I'm surprised Schwarber's that low because anybody that's pushing 50 home runs every year is, uh, I mean, okay, maybe you're hitting him for the defense, but yeah. hey, it's a, that's a heck of a bat to be throwing down there at number 10. Well, he's definitely paid like he's a top 10 left fielder. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, kind of part of it too, but I, I, I don't know. I was surprised that he wasn't on that list somewhere. Kyle Schwarber's a top 10 left fielder. And I mean, look, it's feast or famine with him. It's like, you know, yeah. he's going to either hit a home run or, and then his defense isn't very good. And I mean, I think <laughs> the defense has got to be part of this too. I mean, Dude. according to baseball, Schwarber's the first or second best left fielder in the game, right? I mean, if he's a gold glove winner, at least close to that. Schwarber, uh, Schwarber had more homers than singles last year, right? And Hap, by the way, as far as the defense. Yeah. I mean, right. It was crazy. <laughs> Schwarber's the opposite. I had a scout tell me one time that Schwarber looks like he's playing left field with a boxing glove on. <laughs> but at the same time, man, I love the guy. I mean, I wish he was still yeah. the clubs. put him at the DH spot. I, I would think of him more as a DH than as a left fielder. But that's that's the list. And I love the list. I love the top 10 list because it gives us something to talk about. And we need something to talk about right now as we wait for the Cubs and Cody Bellinger. And, you know, the thing about it is right now, I feel like uh, a lot of these Scott Boris clients are signing. Now it's a lot of the small contracts that you saw Reese Hoskins, a two-year deal. You know, there's some guys signing one-year deals that are pitchers. Um, but starting to see movement in that direction, Boris has held up the market. And the number one guy that he has, the number one guy on free agency, according to a lot of the experts, including me, is Bellinger. So hopefully that happens. And, I, and I'm curious to see if he doesn't sign with the Cubs, what that deal looks like. But I feel like we're moving. And at any time, something could come out to say, hey, this thing's about to get done, uh, whether it's with the Cubs or with another team. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let, let me say a couple things, Chad. First off, I know you're a guy who loves your gear. Go to SmokiesBaseball.com backslash store. And right now, They've got all of the Cubs gear that you can think of. They've got a whole Cubs section. They've got Smokey's gear. They've got autographs, game-worn jerseys, signatures on some of those jerseys, game-used balls and bats, all that stuff. Smokey'sBaseball.com backslash store. And look at this. You're on the, the, the page twice now. ChadwickAnderson.com, Mr. Catfish. <laughs> I don't see myself. I didn't see the banner. It's all right, though. ChadwickAnderson.com. Uh, that's the website, new website. So check that out. I've helped so many families recently. Um, 2024 has been off to a terrific start and people reaching out, um, talking about, you know, whether it's refinancing or purchasing, we've helped a few families save in their budget. Uh, we've taken people, even if you have a 3% interest rate, we've taken people from a 3% rate to a higher rate. And you think, why the hell would you do that? But it's because we've helped them save. $400, $600, per month in their budget. So don't get too focused on just that number because we're still able to save you a lot of money. Uh, but reach out. I uh, would love to hear from you if you're in the market or just want to chat about your situation. Thanks for hanging out with us on the Cubs Baseball Channel. When Belly signs, come right here, and we will talk all about it. Hopefully, that'll be really soon. For Chad Anderson, the Catfish, I'm Mick. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Go Cubs!